watching the penultimate cram time reviewer for the professional education portion of the licensure examination for teachers or LET, which is given and administered by the Professional Regulation Commission in the Philippines. There are 101 questions featured in this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual professional education questions that appeared on previous LETs. Each question comes with a carefully researched, validated, and vetted correct answer. Each correct answer comes with clear, complete, and concise explanation. At Review Central, as a rule, if we cannot explain it, we don't post it. Before you proceed, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click the bell icon to make sure you are notified of all new reviewers and other important updates. Hi, I'm Teacher Rosa. I am a licensed professional teacher from Isabella. Review Central was instrumental in my passing the licensure exam for teachers or LET. That is why, when I was asked to help out in the production of this reviewer video, I did not hesitate to say yes. My contribution is just short and fairly simple, I will be reading to you the first dozen or so questions and their corresponding answers and explanations. I hope you find my voice and narration clear and pleasant enough for you to learn and retain as much as you can from this reviewer. Let's begin. Question number one. Which is the most reliable tool of seeing the development in your pupil's ability to write? A. Portfolio assessment. B. Scoring rubric. C. Interview of pupils. D. S.E. If assessment. The correct answer is A. The most reliable tool for seeing the development in your pupil's ability to write is portfolio assessment. A portfolio assessment allows you to collect and review a series of a student's work over time, providing a comprehensive view of their progress and development in writing. Question number two. Which order follows the basic rule in framing interaction? A. Call on a student, pause, ask the question. B. Ask the question, call on a student, pause. C. Ask the question, pause, call on a student. D. Call on a student, ask the question, pause. The correct answer is C. The correct order that follows the basic rule in framing interaction is first, ask the question, then post, then call on a student. This approach ensures that all students have time to think about the question before being called upon to answer, which helps in eliciting more thoughtful responses and encouraging participation from all students. Question number three. Which is an underlying assumption of the social cognitive theory? A. People are social by nature. B. People learn by observing others. C. People learn by trial and error. D. People learn by association. The correct answer is B. An underlying assumption of social cognitive theory is that people learn by observing others. Social cognitive theory, developed by Albert Bandura, emphasizes that learning occurs through observation, imitation, and modeling of others' behaviors, attitudes, and emotional reactions. This theory highlights the role of observational learning and the influence of social interactions on behavior. Question number four. NSAT and NEAT results are interpreted against a set mastery level. This means that NSAT and NEAT fall under A. Intelligence test B. Aptitude test C. Criterion reference test D. Norm reference test The correct answer is C. Criterion reference test NSAT or National Secondary Achievement Test and NEAT or National Elementary Achievement Test 
are typically interpreted against set mastery levels, meaning they assess whether students have achieved specific learning objectives. This aligns with the concept of a criterion reference test, where performance is measured against a fixed set of criteria or standards, rather than comparing students against each other, which would be a norm reference test. Question number five. Teacher Donna claims, if I have to give reinforcement, it has to be given immediately after the response. Which theory supports teacher Donna? A. Operant conditioning theory. B. Social cognitive theory. C. Cognitive theory. D. Humanist theory. The correct answer is A. The theory that supports teacher Donna's claim that reinforcement should be given immediately after the response is operant conditioning theory. Operant conditioning, developed by B. F. Skinner, emphasizes the importance of reinforcement and punishment in shaping behavior. Immediate reinforcement is crucial in this theory to strengthen the association between the behavior and the consequence, making the behavior more likely to be repeated. Question number 6. The discrimination index of a test item is negative 0.35. What does this mean? A. More from the upper group got the item correctly. B. More from the lower group got the item correctly. C. The test is quite reliable. D. The test item is valid. The correct answer is B. A discrimination index of negative 0.35 indicates that more students from the lower group are those with lower overall test scores got the item correct compared to students from the upper group, those with higher overall test scores. This suggests that the item is not effective at distinguishing between high and low performers. Question number 7. Principal Mary N. wants her teachers to be constructivist in their teaching orientation. On which assumption, or assumptions, is, or are, Principal Mary Ann's action anchored? 1. Students learn by personally constructing the meaning of what is taught. 2. Students construct and reconstruct meanings based on experiences. 3. Students derive meaning from the meaning that teacher gives. Your answer choices are A. 1 and 3 B. 1 only C. 1 and 2 D. 2 only The correct answer is C, 1 and 2. Principal Mary Ann's desire for her teachers to adopt a constructivist teaching orientation is anchored on the following assumptions. 1. Students learn by personally constructing the meaning of what is taught. 2. Students construct and reconstruct meanings based on experiences. Constructivism emphasizes that learners actively create their own understanding and knowledge of the world through experiences and reflections. The idea that students derive meaning primarily from the teacher's explanations, uh, that is, number three, is not aligned with constructivist principles. Therefore, the correct answer is C, 1 and 2. Question number 8. The difficulty index of a test item is 1.0. What does this mean? A. The test item is very good, so retain it. B. The test item is very difficult. C. The test item is extremely easy. D. The test item is not valid. The correct answer is C. The test item is extremely easy. The difficulty index of a test item represents the proportion of students who answered the item correctly. A difficulty index of 1.0 means that all students answered the item correctly, indicating that the item is extremely easy. The difficulty index for test questions ranges from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. A difficulty index of 1.0 means that all students answered the question correctly are very easy. 
A difficulty index of 0.0, .0 means that no students answered the question correctly, very difficult. Most effective test questions typically have a difficulty index between 0.3 and 0.7. Question number 9. Someone wrote, environment relates to the profound relationship between matter, nature, and society, and in such a context, ICT brings new ways of living in a more interconnected society, all of which reduces our dependency on matter and affects our relationship with nature. What does this convey? A. Environment and ICT are poles apart. B. ICT impacts the environment. C. Environment affects ICT. D. ICT brings us away from an interconnected society. The correct answer is B. The statement conveys that ICT impacts the environment. It discusses how information and communication technology, or ICT, influence the way we interact with our environment, matter, and nature, suggesting that ICT contribute to changes in our relationship with these elements and lead to a more interconnected society. Question number 10. Educational institutions' effort of developing work skills inside the school are aimed at a. Developing moral character b. Inculcating love of country c. Teaching the duties of citizenship d. Developing vocational efficiency The correct answer is d. Educational institutions' efforts to develop work skills inside the school are aimed at developing vocational efficiency. The goal is to equip students with practical skills and competencies that will enhance their ability to perform effectively in various vocational settings. This focus on vocational efficiency helps prepare students for future employment and career success. Question number 11. Teacher Beth discovered that her pupils are weak in comprehension. To further determine which particular skills her pupils are weak in, which test should Teacher Beth give? A. Aptitude test. B. Placement test. C. Diagnostic test. D. Standardized test. The correct answer is C. To determine which particular skills her pupils are weak in, teacher Beth should give a diagnostic test. A diagnostic test is designed to identify specific areas of difficulty or weaknesses in students' skills and understanding. It provides detailed information on what students struggle with, allowing the teacher to address these specific issues effectively. Question number 12. That the quality of Philippine education is declining was the result of a study by EDCOM which recommended to a blank teachers and teaching. A. Regulate. B. Professionalize. C. Strengthen. D. Improve. The correct answer is B. Professionalize. The study by EDCOM or the Educational Development Commission, which highlighted the decline in the quality of Philippine education recommended professionalizing teachers and the teaching profession. The EDCOM report emphasized the need to professionalize teachers and teaching to address the issues affecting the quality of education. This involves enhancing the qualifications, training, and standards for educators to improve overall educational outcomes. Question number 13. As provided in Republic Act 4670, every teacher shall enjoy equitable safeguards at each stage of any disciplinary procedures and shall entitle to the following. A. The right to be informed in writing of the charges. B. The right to full access to the evidence in the case. C. The right to appeal to clearly designated authorities. D. All of these. The correct answer is D. 
as provided in Republic Act 4670, also known as the Magna Carta for Public School Teachers, every teacher is entitled to equitable safeguards at each stage of any disciplinary procedures, including the right to be informed in writing of the charges, or answer choice A, the right to full access to the evidence in the case, or answer choice B, the right to appeal to clearly designated authorities, or answer choice C. Since all the options listed are safeguards provided under this Act, the correct answer is D, all of these. Question number 14. The subject matter or content to be learned must be within the time allowed, resources available, expertise of the teacher, and nature of learners. What criterion is addressed? A. Validity. B. Significance. C. Interest. D. Feasibility. The correct answer is D. Feasibility. The criterion addressed by ensuring that the subject matter or content to be learned fits within the time allowed, resources available, expertise of the teacher, and nature of learners is Feasibility. Feasibility considers whether the content can be effectively taught and learned given the constraints and resources available. Question number 15. The theme of Vygotsky's sociocultural theory emphasizes the role of appropriate assistance given by the teacher to accomplish a task. Such help enables the child to move from the zone of actual development to a zone of proximal development. Such assistance is termed A. Competency Technique B. Scaffolding C. Active Participation D. Collaboration The correct answer is B. In Vygotsky's sociocultural theory, scaffolding refers to the assistance or support provided by a teacher or more knowledgeable other to help a learner achieve a task they would not be able to accomplish independently. This support helps the learner move from their current level of development, that is, zone of actual development, to a higher level, that is, zone of proximal development. Question number 16. Which will be the most authentic assessment tool for an instructional objective on working with and relating to people? A. Conducting mock elections. B. Home visitation. C. Organizing a community project. D. Writing articles on working and relating to people. The correct answer is C. The most authentic assessment tool for an instructional objective on working with and relating to people would be organizing a community project. This option requires students to engage directly with others, collaborate, and demonstrate their ability to work with and relate to people in a real-world context. It's an authentic assessment because it closely mirrors the actual skills and behaviors being assessed. Question number 17. In a multiple choice test item with four options and out of 50 examinees, which was the least effective distractor? A. The option that was chosen by 13 examinees. B. The option that was chosen by two examinees. C. The option that was chosen by 30 examinees. D. The correct answer that was chosen by five examinees. The correct answer is B. The least effective distractor in a multiple choice test item is the option that was chosen by two examinees. In multiple choice tests, distractors, that is, the incorrect options, are considered effective if they attract a reasonable number of students who do not know the correct answer. If only two out of 50 examinees chose a particular distractor, it means that this option did not effectively mislead the students, making it the least effective distractor. And that's it for my short part in this reviewer. 
Now I turn you over to my fellow teacher, James. You did a great job, Teacher Rosa. Hello everyone. I am Teacher James, also a licensed professional teacher and a proud Elongo. I shall continue from where Teacher Rosa ended and will be reading to you the next set of questions. Let's continue. Question number 18. The result of the item analysis showed that item number 4 has a discrimination index of 0.67. What characteristic could be true about this item? A. Difficult. B. Invalid. C. Easy. D. Average. The correct answer is D. Average. A discrimination index of 0.67 suggests that the item is effective in distinguishing between high-performing and low-performing students, which often corresponds to an item of moderate difficulty, neither too easy nor too difficult. An average item typically has good discrimination because it can effectively separate those who have mastered the material from those who have not. Question number 19. Which of these activities is not appealing to the bodily kinesthetic learners? A. Making math moves. B. Doing simple calisthenics. C. Sketching slash illustrating events. D. Joining extramural events. The correct answer is C. Bodily kinesthetic learners are those who learn best through physical activity, movement, and hands-on tasks. While options A, B, and D involve physical activity, sketching slash illustrating events, option C is more of a visual spatial task and does not primarily engage bodily movement. Therefore, it is less appealing to bodily kinesthetic learners. Question number 20. Keeping track of assessment results from one periodic rating to the next is useful in contributing to the development of A. A. Regional plan. B. Annual implementation plan. C. School improvement plan. D. Division plan. The correct answer is C, school improvement plan. Keeping track of assessment results over time is crucial for identifying strengths and areas for improvement within a school. This information is used to develop and refine a school improvement plan, which focuses on enhancing overall educational quality and addressing specific needs based on assessment data. Question number 21. Direct instruction is for facts, rules, and actions as indirect instruction is for A. Hypotheses, verified data, and conclusions. B. Concepts, patterns, and abstractions. C. Concepts, processes, and generalizations. D. Guesses, data, and conclusions. The correct answer is C. Direct instruction is typically used for teaching facts, rules, and specific actions, while indirect instruction is more suited for concepts, processes, and generalizations. Indirect instruction often involves more exploration and discovery, helping students understand broader concepts, processes, and generalizations rather than just specific facts or rules. Question number 22. To make the lesson meaningful, systematic, and motivating, teachers' examples should be A. Based on higher level skills. B. Interesting and aided with illustrations. C. Easy, simple, and understandable. D. Relevant to students' experience and knowledge. The correct answer is D. To make the lesson meaningful, systematic, and motivating, teachers' examples should be relevant to students' experience and knowledge. Examples that connect with students' own experiences and existing knowledge make the lesson more engaging and easier to understand, helping students relate new information to what they already know. This relevance enhances comprehension and motivation. 
Question number 23. Which are the most important concerns about the use of ICT in instruction? 1. Developing appropriate curriculum materials that allow students to construct meaning and develop knowledge through the use of ICT. 2. Devising strategies to meaningfully integrate technology into the curriculum. 3. Using pedagogical skills related to technology. 4. Providing teachers with skills for using software applications. Your answer choices are A. 1 and 3 B. 2 and 3 C. 3 and 4 D. 1, 2, 3 and 4 The correct answer is D. All the listed concerns are crucial for effectively integrating ICT into education. 1. Developing appropriate curriculum materials. Ensuring that curriculum materials are designed to help students construct meaning and develop knowledge through ICT. 2. Devising strategies to meaningfully integrate technology into the curriculum. Creating plans for how technology will be used to enhance learning. 3. Using pedagogical skills related to technology. Applying effective teaching strategies that incorporate technology. 4. Providing teachers with skills for using software applications. Equipping teachers with the necessary skills to use and teach with various software applications. Addressing these concerns helps ensure that ICT is used effectively to support and enhance teaching and learning. Question number 24. Teacher Allen's lesson is about the parts of the gumamila. He asked his pupils per group to bring a real flower to study the different parts. After the group work labeling each part, teacher Allen gave a test. What would be the best type of test he can give? A. Essay type. B. Matching type. C. Diary. D. Journal. The correct answer is B. Matching type. Given the context of the lesson on the parts of the gumamila, hibiscus, where students have studied and labeled the parts of a real flower, the best type of test would be matching type. A matching type test would be effective for assessing students' ability to correctly identify and label the different parts of the flower. It allows students to match the names of the parts with their corresponding labels or descriptions, directly evaluating their understanding of the content. Question number 25. Which of the following techniques of curriculum implementation is fit to the objective of developing cooperative learning and social interaction? A. Bus session. B. Graded recitation. C. Individual reporting. D. Lecture. The correct answer is A. The technique of curriculum implementation that is most suited to the objective of developing cooperative learning and social interaction is a bus session. A bus session involves students working in small groups to discuss a topic or problem. This technique promotes cooperation, active participation, and social interaction among students, making it an effective method for achieving the objective of developing these skills. Question number 26. To make our children become like little scientists, which of the following methods should we employ more often? 1. Inquiry. 2. Problem solving. 3. Laboratory. Your answer choices are as follows. A. 2 and 3. B. 1 and 2. C. 1, 2 and 3. D. 1 and 3. The correct answer is C, 1, 2, and 3. To encourage children to become like little scientists, employing the following methods is effective. 1. Inquiry, encouraging curiosity and asking questions helps children explore and understand the world, mirroring the process of scientific investigation. 2. Problem solving, engaging children in problem solving activities fosters critical thinking and the application of knowledge which are key aspects of scientific work. 3. Laboratory, providing hands-on, 
experimental learning experiences in a laboratory setting helps children directly interact with materials and observe phenomena, reinforcing scientific methods and concepts. Using all three methods, that is, inquiry, problem solving, and laboratory activities, promotes a comprehensive approach to fostering scientific thinking and skills in children. Question number 27. Which is the ideal stage of moral development? A. Social contract. B. Universal ethical principle. C. Law and order. D. Good boy or good girl. The correct answer is B. The ideal stage of moral development, according to Lawrence Kohlberg's theory, is universal ethical principle. In Kohlberg's stages of moral development, the universal ethical principle stage represents the highest level of moral reasoning. At this stage, individuals make moral decisions based on abstract principles and universal ethical values, such as justice and human rights, rather than on social conventions or rules. Question number 28. Who claim that children are natural learners and therefore must be taught in natural settings? A. Piaget B. Froebel C. Montessori D. Kohlberg The correct answer is C. The individual who claimed that children are natural learners and therefore should be taught in natural settings is Maria Montessori. Maria Montessori was an Italian physician and educator who developed the Montessori method, an educational approach emphasizing independence, hands-on learning and child-centered education. Maria Montessori emphasized the importance of a learning environment that mirrors real-life settings and allows children to learn through their own experiences. She believed that children are naturally curious and capable learners who thrive best in environments that support and extend their natural tendencies. Question number 29. A child was punished for cheating in an exam. For sure the child won't cheat again anytime soon, but this does not guarantee that the child won't cheat ever again. Based on Thorndike's theory on punishment and learning, this shows that A. Punishment strengthens a response. B. Punishment doesn't remove a response. C. Punishment removes response. D. Punishment weakens a response. The correct answer is B. Based on Thorndike's theory on punishment and learning, the situation described shows that punishment doesn't remove a response. Thorndike's theory suggests that while punishment can suppress a behavior in the short term, it does not necessarily eliminate the behavior completely. In this case, the punishment for cheating may deter the child from cheating in the short term, but it does not guarantee that the child will never cheat again. <laughs> Question number 30. The test in English and mathematics showed poor results in comprehension and problem-solving questions. How may the data be used for better learners' performance? A. Use context clues in vocabulary building. B. Give more exercises or situations on comprehension questions. C. Determine weakness in grammatical structures. D. Involve parents in guiding learners developing good study habits. The correct answer is B. To address poor results in comprehension and problem-solving questions, the most direct approach for improving learners' performance would be to give more exercises or situations on comprehension questions. Providing additional practice and targeted exercises in comprehension and problem-solving can help students develop and strengthen these skills. This focused approach directly addresses the identified areas of weakness, improving their ability to handle similar questions in the future. That ends my part and small contribution to this reviewer video. On behalf of Teacher Rosa, thank you very much to Review Central for allowing us to contribute even just a small part to this reviewer. It is just our small way of paying forward for passing the LET with the help of their reviewer videos. Stay tuned as there are more to this reviewer video.
Our friends in Review Central, who are professional narrators, will now continue to its completion. All the best to all of you who are taking the L.E.T. soon. Question number 31. Institutions of learning are required to meet the minimum standards for state recognition, but are encouraged to set higher standards of quality over and above the minimum through, blank, as provided in Educational Act of 1982. A. Lifelong education. B. Voluntary accreditation. C. Formal education. D. Academic freedom. The correct answer is B. Voluntary accreditation. The Educational Act of 1982 encourages institutions to meet minimum standards for state recognition but also to pursue higher standards of quality through voluntary accreditation. This process allows institutions to be evaluated by independent accrediting bodies to ensure they exceed basic requirements and maintain high levels of educational quality. Question number 32. As an effective classroom manager, what should a teacher do? 1. She uses instructional time wisely. 2. She uses her power to punish students for the sake of discipline. 3. She puts to use the available and appropriate materials. 4. She manipulates colleagues and students so she can meet her goals. Your answer choices are as follows. A. 1 and 3. B. 2, 3, and 4. C. 1, 2, and 3. D. 1, 2, 3, and 4. The correct answer is A. 1 and 3. An effective classroom manager should. 1. Use instructional time wisely. This ensures that students receive the maximum benefit from their learning time. And. 3. Put to use the available and appropriate materials. Utilizing resources effectively supports learning and helps manage classroom activities. Using power to punish, answer choice 2, and manipulating colleagues and students, answer choice 4, are not aligned with effective classroom management practices, which should focus on positive reinforcement, fairness, and creating a supportive learning environment. Question number 33. In the KWL technique K stands for what the pupil already knows, W for what he wants to know, and L for what he, blank. A. Failed to learn. B. He likes to learn. C. Needs to learn. D. Learned. The correct answer is D. Learned. In the KWL technique, K stands for what the pupil already knows, W stands for what he wants to know, and L stands for what he learned. The KWL technique is a learning strategy that helps students organize information and track their learning progress. It involves three steps, K, for know, where students list what they already know about a topic, W, for want to know, where they identify what they want to learn, and L, for learned, where they record what they have learned after the lesson or activity. This method encourages active engagement, sets learning goals, and reinforces knowledge acquisition. Question number 34. Which is one characteristic of an effective classroom management? A. It quickly and unobtrusively redirects misbehavior once it occurs. B. It teaches dependence on others for self-control. C. It respects cultural norms of a limited group of students. D. Strategies are simple enough to be used consistently. The correct answer is A. The characteristics of effective classroom management include a. It quickly and unobtrusively redirects misbehavior once it occurs. Effective classroom management involves addressing and correcting misbehavior in a way that minimizes disruption and maintains a positive learning environment. And d. Strategies are simple enough to be used consistently. Consistent application of straightforward strategies helps maintain order and reinforces positive behavior. Both a and d are key characteristics of effective classroom management. However, if we have to choose one characteristic only, answer choice A highlights the immediate and unobtrusive nature of managing misbehavior, which is crucial for maintaining a productive classroom atmosphere, so we'll choose answer choice A. Question number 35. 
When curriculum content is fairly distributed in each area of discipline, this means that the curriculum is blank. A. Sequenced. B. Balanced. C. Integrated. D. Continued. The correct answer is B. Balanced. When curriculum content is fairly distributed across each area of discipline, this means that the curriculum is balanced. A balanced curriculum ensures that all areas of discipline receive appropriate attention and coverage, providing students with a well-rounded education. Question number 36. The difficulty index of a test item is 0.1. This means that the test is A. A quality item. B. Very difficult. C. Very easy. D. Missed by everybody. The correct answer is B. Very difficult. The difficulty index of a test item is calculated based on the proportion of students who answered the item correctly. A difficulty index of 0.1 indicates that very few or almost none of the students answered the item correctly, which means the item is very difficult. The difficulty index for test questions ranges from 0.0 to 1.0. A difficulty index of 1.0 means that all students answered the question correctly, meaning it's very easy. A difficulty index of 0.0 means that no students answered the question correctly, meaning it's very difficult. Most effective test questions typically have a difficulty index between 0.3 and 0.7. Question number 37. The following are characteristics of a child-friendly school except A. Exclusive B. Child-centered C. Gender-sensitive D. Non-discriminating The correct answer is A. The characteristic that does not align with the principles of a child-friendly school is, exclusive. A child-friendly school should be child-centered, gender-sensitive, and non-discriminating. It should promote inclusivity, respect for all genders, and a supportive environment for every child. Exclusive is contrary to these principles, as it suggests the opposite of inclusivity and equal opportunity. Question number 38. The norms in a school culture are centered on the blank. A. Learner. B. Teacher. C. Principal. D. Supervisor. The correct answer is A. The norms in a school culture are typically centered on the learner. In most educational settings, particularly those that are learner-centered, the primary focus is on the student's needs, growth, and learning outcomes. The norms, values, and practices within the school are designed to support and enhance the learner's educational experience. Question number 39. What is an alternative assessment tool for teaching and learning consisting of a collection of work or artifacts finished or in progress accomplished by the targeted clientele? A. Rubric. B. Achievement test. C. Evaluation instrument. D. Portfolio. The alternative assessment tool that consists of a collection of work or artifacts, whether finished or in progress, accomplished by the targeted clientele is D. Portfolio. A portfolio is a compilation of a student's work over time, reflecting their learning progress, achievements, and efforts. It is used to assess their growth and development in a more comprehensive and personalized manner compared to traditional tests. Question number 40. Societal change requires continually deep-seated questions about good living. Which of these did Socrates recognize as the greatest of human virtues? A. Moral wisdom. B. Fair justice. C. Courage. D. Piety. The correct answer is A. Socrates recognized moral wisdom as the greatest of human virtues. He believed that moral wisdom, or the knowledge of what is right and just, was essential for living a virtuous and fulfilling life. Socrates emphasized that true knowledge leads to virtuous behavior, and he regarded moral wisdom as the foundation of ethical living. Question number 41. 
among the following curriculum stakeholders, who has the most responsibility in curriculum implementation? A. The learners. B. The school heads. C. The teachers. D. The parents. The correct answer is C. The teachers have the most responsibility in curriculum implementation among the given curriculum stakeholders. Teachers are directly involved in the day-to-day -day delivery of the curriculum. They are responsible for interpreting and adapting the curriculum to meet the needs of their students, using appropriate teaching strategies, and assessing student learning. Their role is crucial in bringing the curriculum to life in the classroom and ensuring that educational goals are met. Question number 42. Study the given table showing a group of tests administered with the following results, then answer the question. The subjects tested were math, physics, and English. For the mean, math is 56, physics is 41, and English is 80. For the standard deviation, math is 10, physics is 9, and English is 16. For the student's score, math is 43, physics is 31, and English is 49. In which subject, or subjects, did the student perform most poorly in relation to the group's performance? A. English. B. English and math. C. Math. D. Physics. The correct answer is A. English. To determine in which subject the student performed most poorly in relation to the group's performance, we need to calculate the z-scores for each subject. The z-score formula is, z equals student's score minus the mean, all over the standard deviation. Let's calculate the z-scores for each subject. For math, z equals the quantity 43 minus 56, all over 10. This will result to a z of negative 1.3. For physics, z equals the quantity 31 minus 41, all over 9. This will end up to be z equals negative 1.11. For English, z equals the quantity 49 minus 80, all over 16. This will result to a z of minus 1.94. The most negative z-score indicates the subject where the student performed most poorly in relation to the group's performance. The most negative z-score here is in English with minus 1.94. Therefore, the correct answer is A, English. Question number 43. You like to show a close representation of the size and shape of the Earth and its location in the entire solar system. What is the best instructional aid? A, picture. B, model. C, realia. D, film. To show a close representation of the size and shape of the Earth and its location in the entire solar system, the best instructional aid would be B, model. A model, specifically a solar system model, provides a three-dimensional and accurate representation of the Earth's size, shape, and its position relative to other celestial bodies in the solar system. This helps students visualize and better understand these concepts. Question number 44. To determine your pupil's entry knowledge and skills, which should you employ? A. Interview. B. Focus group discussion. C. Post test. D. Pretest. The correct answer is D. To determine your pupil's entry knowledge and skills, you should employ a pretest. A pretest is given before instruction begins to assess students' existing knowledge and skills. This helps the teacher identify what the students already know and what areas need more focus during instruction. Question number 45. What is the implication of using a method that focuses on the why rather than the how? A. There is best method. B. Typical one will be good for any subject. C. These methods should be standardized for different subjects. D. Teaching methods should favor inquiry and problem solving. The correct answer is D. The implication of using a method that focuses on the why rather than the how is that teaching methods should favor inquiry and problem solving. When teaching emphasizes understanding the reasons behind concepts and encourages exploration of underlying principles, it aligns with inquiry-based learning and problem-solving approaches. 
these methods engage students in critical thinking and deeper understanding, rather than just following procedures. Question number 46. Which software can you use to predict changes in weather patterns and or trends in the population of endangered species? A. Word processing. B. Spreadsheet. C. Desktop publishing. D. Database. The correct answer is B. To predict changes in weather patterns and trends in the population of endangered species, you would use a spreadsheet software. Spreadsheets are useful for organizing and analyzing data, performing calculations, and creating charts and graphs to identify trends and make predictions. They can handle large datasets and perform statistical analyzes that are crucial for forecasting and modeling changes in various fields, including weather and wildlife populations. Question number 47. You would like to assess students' ability to write a portfolio. What type of test will determine their ability to organize ideas and think critically? A. Long test. B. Essay test. C. Formative test. D. Summative test. The correct answer is B. To assess students' ability to organize ideas and think critically when writing a portfolio, the most appropriate type of test would be an essay test. An essay test allows students to demonstrate their ability to organize their thoughts, develop coherent arguments, and engage in critical thinking. It provides an opportunity for them to show their writing skills, structure their ideas effectively, and apply their understanding in a comprehensive manner. Question number 48. Teacher Faye asks one student, Rachel, can you summarize what we have just read? Remember the title of this section of the chapter. This is an example of a teacher's effort at blank. A. Scaffolding. B. Inspiring. C. Directing. D. Giving feedback. The correct answer is A. Teacher Faye's request for Rachel to summarize what has been read, along with a prompt to remember the title of the section, is an example of scaffolding. Scaffolding involves providing support to help students complete tasks and gradually developing their understanding and skills. By asking Rachel to summarize and recall key details, Teacher Faye is offering guidance that helps her organize and articulate her understanding of the material, which is a key aspect of scaffolding. Question number 49. Cooperative learning approach makes use of a classroom organization where students work in teams to help each other learn. What mode of grouping can facilitate the skill and values desired? A. Large group. B. Homogeneous. C. Heterogeneous. D. Wear multicolored dress to catch the student's attention. The correct answer is C. The mode of grouping that can best facilitate skill development and the desired values in a cooperative learning approach is heterogeneous grouping. In heterogeneous grouping, students of varying abilities, backgrounds, and skills are placed in the same group. This diversity allows for a richer exchange of ideas, peer teaching, and mutual support, which can enhance learning and help develop collaboration and social skills. Question number 50. To solve moral ambiguity among us Filipinos, we must a. Excuse ourselves whenever we do wrong. b. Blame our government for not doing anything about it. c. Be aware and responsible about the problem. d. Be comfortable with the present state of affairs. The correct answer is C. To address moral ambiguity and solve related issues among us Filipinos, we should be aware and responsible about the problem. Being aware of and taking responsibility for moral issues helps individuals and communities actively engage in finding solutions and making positive changes. This approach encourages personal and collective accountability, leading to more ethical behavior and social progress. Question number 51. It is the study of man's prehistory through the buried remnants of ancient culture, skeletal remains of human beings. A. Anthropology. B. Archaeology. C. Ethnology. D. Ethnography. 
The correct answer is B. The study of man's prehistory through the buried remnants of ancient cultures and skeletal remains of human beings is known as archaeology. Archaeology focuses on uncovering and analyzing material remains to understand past human activity. Question number 52. In their desire to make schools perform, the DEPED then published the ranking of schools in NAT results nationwide. As an effect of this practice, what did schools tend to do? 1. Taught at the expense of NAT. 2. Conducted review classes for NAT at the expense of teaching. 3. Practice the so-called teaching to the test. Your answer choices are A. 2 and 3. B. 2 only. C. 1 and 3. D. 3 only. The correct answer is A. 2 and 3. In response to the publication of school rankings based on NAT or the National Achievement Test results, schools often tended to conduct review classes for NAT at the expense of teaching. Schools might focus more on preparing students specifically for the NAT rather than covering the full curriculum. And practice the so-called teaching to the test. Schools might have tailored their teaching to better align with the types of questions and content expected on the test to improve their rankings. This approach often prioritizes test performance over broader educational goals. Question number 53. Which one appropriately describes your lesson if you use the cognitive approach? A. Promotes find out for yourself approach. B. Lecture dominated. C. Rote learning dominated. D. Highly directed teaching. The correct answer is A. If you use the cognitive approach in your lesson, it is best described as the find out for yourself approach. The cognitive approach emphasizes active learning and understanding, encouraging students to explore, analyze, and construct their own knowledge. It focuses on promoting critical thinking, problem solving, and deeper understanding rather than just rote memorization or passive reception of information. Question number 54. Which apply, or applies, to extrinsically motivated learners? 1. Tend to process information superficially. 2. Tend to be content with meeting minimum requirements. 3. Achieve at high level. Your answer choices are A. 1 and 2. B. 2 only. C. 1 and 3. D. 1 only. The correct answer is A. 1 and 2. Extrinsically motivated learners are often characterized by 1. Their tendency to process information superficially. Extrinsically motivated learners may focus on just enough to achieve external rewards or avoid negative consequences, leading to more superficial processing of information. And 2. Their tendency to be content with meeting minimum requirements. They might aim to meet the minimum criteria necessary to obtain rewards or avoid penalties, rather than striving for deeper understanding or excellence. Extrinsically motivated learners are less likely to consistently achieve at a high level unless the external rewards are particularly compelling. Question number 55. Teacher Belinda is a teacher of English as a second language. She uses vocabulary cards, five in the blank sentences, dictation, and writing exercises in teaching a lesson about grocery shopping. Based on this information, which of the following is a valid conclusion? A. Teacher Belinda is reinforcing learning by giving the same information in a variety of methods. B. Teacher Belinda is applying Bloom's hierarchy of cognitive learning. C. Teacher Belinda wants to do less talk. D. Teacher Belinda is emphasizing listening and speaking skills. The correct answer is A. Based on the information provided, the valid conclusion is that Teacher Belinda is reinforcing learning by giving the same information in a variety of methods. Teacher Belinda uses multiple methods, vocabulary cards, fill-in-the-blank sentences, dictation, and writing exercises, to teach the lesson about grocery shopping. This approach reinforces learning by presenting the same content through different activities, helping students to understand and retain the material more effectively. Question number 56. A mother gives her son his favorite snack every time the boy cleans up his room. Afterwards, the boy cleans his room every day in anticipation of the snack. Which theory explains this? A. Operant conditioning. B. Social learning theory. C. Associative learning. D. 
Pavlovian conditioning. The correct answer is A. The scenario where a mother gives her son his favorite snack every time he cleans up his room, leading him to clean his room every day in anticipation of the snack, is best explained by operant conditioning. Operant conditioning, a theory developed by B.F. Skinner, involves learning through rewards and punishments. In this case, the snack acts as a positive reinforcement, increasing the likelihood that the boy will continue to clean his room to receive the reward. Question number 57. What is the primary fundamental question in examining a curriculum? A. What educational experiences can be provided that are likely to attain these purposes? B. What educational purposes should the school seek to attain? C. How can these educational experiences be effectively organized? D. How can we determine whether these purposes are attained or not? The correct answer is B. The primary fundamental question in examining a curriculum is, what educational purposes should the school seek to attain? This question focuses on the underlying goals and objectives of the curriculum, which guides all subsequent decisions about educational experiences, organization, and assessment. Identifying the purposes helps in shaping the curriculum to ensure it meets the intended educational outcomes. Question number 58. To elicit more students' response, teacher Gemma made use of covert responses. Which one did she not do? A. She had the students write their response privately. B. She showed the correct answers on the overhead after the students have written their responses. C. She had the students write their responses privately then called each of them. D. She refrained from judging on the students' responses. The correct answer is B. To elicit more student responses using covert responses, teacher Gemma would avoid actions that explicitly reveal the responses or provide immediate feedback that might affect students' willingness to participate. Let's analyze each of the given options. A. She had the students write their response privately. This aligns with using covert responses as it allows students to reflect an answer without immediate judgment. B. She showed the correct answers on the overhead after the students have written their responses. This action does not align with covert responses, as it reveals the correct answers and might influence students' subsequent responses. C. She had the students write their responses privately then called each of them. This can still be considered a covert approach since the initial writing is private. D. She refrained from judging on the students' responses. This supports a covert approach by avoiding immediate evaluation. Therefore, teacher Gemma not use answer choice B. Question number 59. There is a statement that says, no amount of good instruction will come out without good classroom management. Which of the following best explains this statement? A. Classroom management is important to effect good instruction. B. There must be classroom management for instruction to yield good outcomes or results. C. Classroom management means good instruction. D. Good instruction is equal to effective classroom management. The statement no amount of good instruction will come out without good classroom management is best explained by answer choice B. There must be classroom management for instruction to yield good outcomes or results. Effective classroom management is essential for creating an environment conducive to learning. Without proper management, even the best instructional methods can be undermined by disruptions or lack of order, preventing the instruction from achieving its intended outcomes. Question number 60. A person who had painful experiences at the dentist's office may become fearful at the mere sight of the dentist's office. Which theory can explain this? A. Generalization. B. Classical conditioning. C. Operant conditioning. D. Attribution theory. The correct answer is B. The scenario where a person who had painful experiences at the dentist's office becomes fearful at the mere sight of the dentist's office can be explained by classical conditioning. Classical conditioning, a theory developed by Ivan Pavlov, involves learning through associations. In this case, the painful experiences, the unconditioned stimulus, become associated with the sight of the dentist's office, the conditioned stimulus, leading to a fear response, the conditioned response, at the sight of the office alone. Question number 61. Which one can help students develop the habit of critical thinking? A. Asking low-level questions. B. 
a willingness to suspend judgment until sufficient evidence is represented. C. Asking convergent questions. D. Blind obedience to authority. The correct answer is B. To help students develop the habit of critical thinking, the most effective approach is be willing to suspend judgment until sufficient evidence is presented. Critical thinking involves evaluating information and arguments carefully and withholding judgment until there is enough evidence to support a conclusion. This approach encourages students to think deeply, question assumptions, and consider multiple perspectives, which are key components of critical thinking. Question number 62. Multiple intelligences can be used to explain children's reading performance. Which group tends to be good readers? A. Linguistically intelligent group. B. Spatially intelligent group. C. Existentially intelligent group. D. Kinesthetically intelligent group. The correct answer is A. The group that tends to be good readers is the linguistically intelligent group. Linguistic intelligence involves a strong ability with language, including reading, writing, and understanding language. Children with high linguistic intelligence are generally more proficient in reading due to their strong grasp of language and its nuances. Question number 63. Teachers should avoid, blank, in assigning student performance-based ratings. A. Arbitrariness and bias. B. Unnecessary deductions. C. Partiality and calculation. D. Unnecessary evaluation. The correct answer is A. Teachers should avoid arbitrariness and bias. In assigning student performance-based ratings, it's important to ensure that the evaluation is fair, consistent, and objective. Avoiding arbitrariness and bias helps ensure that ratings reflect students' true performance and abilities, rather than being influenced by personal opinions or prejudices. To be clear, the other answered choices are also not good practices and are to be avoided as well, but arbitrariness and bias is foremost to be avoided. If the answer choices include in all of these options then that would be the correct answer to choose. Question number 64. Which of the following is not a guidance role of the classroom teacher? A. Psychological test administrator. B. Listener advisor. C. Human potential discoverer. D. Total development facilitator. The correct answer is A. The role that is not typically associated with the classroom teacher's guidance role is as a psychological test administrator. While teachers often play roles such as a listener, advisor, human potential discoverer, and total development facilitator, the administration of psychological tests is generally handled by school counselors or psychologists who have specialized training in psychological assessment. Question number 65. Watson applied classical conditioning in his experiments and the results showed that behavior is learned through stimulus-response associations, specifically the development of emotional responses to certain stimuli. This helps in a. Interpreting reflexes as emotions. b. Understanding fears, phobias, and love. c. Connecting observable behavior to stimulus. d. Understanding the role of overt behavior. The correct answer is B. Watson's application of classical conditioning in his experiments, which demonstrated how emotional responses can be developed through stimulus-response associations, helps in understanding fears, phobias, and love. John B. Watson was an influential American psychologist best known for founding the school of thought known as behaviorism. He emphasized the study of observable behavior over introspection, arguing that psychology should be an objective science focusing on measurable and observable phenomena rather than on the unobservable inner workings of the mind. Watson's work laid the foundation for later behaviorist theories and had a significant impact on the development of psychology in the 20th century. Watson's work, especially his Little Albert experiment, showed how emotional responses like fear can be conditioned. This research contributes to understanding how such responses can develop and be associated with specific stimuli, including fears and phobias. Question number 66. What does a negatively skewed score contribution imply? A. The scores congregate on the left side of the normal distribution curve. B. The scores are widespread. C. The students must be academically poor. D. The scores congregate on the right side of the normal distribution curve. The correct answer is D. 
a negatively skewed score distribution implies that the scores congregate on the right side of the normal distribution curve. In a negatively skewed distribution, most of the scores are clustered on the higher end of the scale, with a tail extending towards the lower end. This indicates that a majority of the scores are high, and there are fewer low scores. Question number 67. A high school graduate was refused admission to a university on the grounds that he failed the admission test. The student insisted that he had the right to be admitted and the act of the university was a violation of his right to education. Was the student correct? A. No, the university may refuse the student in its exercise of academic freedom. B. Yes, education is everyone's right. C. Yes, especially if he belongs to the indigenous people's group. D. No, if the university is exclusively for girls. The correct answer is A. The student was not correct in insisting that the university's refusal was a violation of his right to education based on the failure of the admission test. Indeed, the university may refuse the student in its exercise of academic freedom. Universities have the right to set their own admission criteria and standards as part of their academic freedom. While education is a fundamental right, it does not guarantee admission to any particular institution, especially if the institution has established specific admission requirements, such as passing an entrance test. Question number 68. Which of the following is a correct statement on service contracting scheme? A. It increases access to education. B. It works against quality education. C. It discriminates against private schools. D. It is not cost effective. The correct statement on the service contracting scheme is A. It increases access to education. The service contracting scheme, often implemented in education systems, aims to increase access to education by providing financial support for students to attend private schools. This scheme helps broaden educational opportunities for students who might otherwise not have access to quality education due to financial constraints. Question number 69. Michelle obtained and sat percentile rank of 80. This indicates that A. She surpassed in performance 80% of her fellow examinees. B. She got a score of 80. C. She surpassed in performance 20% of her fellow examinees. D. She answered 80 items correctly. The correct answer is A. If Michelle obtained and sat percentile rank of 80, this indicates that she surpassed in performance 80% of her fellow examinees. A percentile rank of 80 means that Michelle performed better than 80% of the other test takers, while 20% of the test takers scored higher. This percentile rank does not refer to the number of correct answers or an absolute score but rather the relative standing compared to other examinees. Question number 70. Teachers are encouraged to make use of authentic assessment. Which goes with authentic assessment? A. Unrealistic performances. B. Decontextualized drills. C. Real-world application of lessons learned. D. Answering high multiple-choice test items. The correct answer is C. Real-world application of lessons learned goes with authentic assessment. Authentic assessment focuses on evaluating students through tasks that reflect real-world challenges and applications, allowing them to demonstrate their skills and knowledge in practical and meaningful ways. This contrasts with unrealistic performances, decontextualized drills, and traditional multiple-choice tests, which may not accurately measure students' ability to apply their learning in real-life situations. Question number 71. Global students learn with short bursts of energy. To maintain concentration they require, blank. A. Frequent reminder that they need to concentrate. B. Frequent and intermittent breaks. C. Short and easy reading materials. D. Music while studying. The correct answer is B. To maintain concentration, global students who learn in short bursts of energy generally require frequent and intermittent breaks. Frequent and intermittent breaks help manage attention spans and prevent mental fatigue, allowing students to maintain their focus and productivity during study sessions. Question number 72. Faith, hope, 
and love our values now and forever whether they will be valued by people or not. Upon what philosophy is this anchor? A. Idealism. B. Existentialism. C. Realism. D. Pragmatism. The correct answer is A. The philosophy that asserts values like faith, hope, and love are valued regardless of their acceptance or recognition by people is idealism. Idealism, particularly in its emphasis on enduring and absolute values, posits that certain values and ideals hold intrinsic worth and significance beyond their practical or immediate application. This philosophy often considers values to be timeless and unchanging, regardless of external factors or societal acceptance. Question number 73. In a grade distribution, what does the normal curve mean? A. A large number of students receiving low grades and very few students with high marks. B. A large number of more or less average students and very few students receiving low and high grades. C. A large number of students with high grades and very few with low grades. D. All of the students have average grades. The correct answer is B. In a grade distribution, the normal curve typically means that a large number of more or less average students and very few students receiving low and high grades. The normal distribution, or bell curve, is characterized by most students scoring around the average, with fewer students achieving very high or very low grades. This creates a symmetric distribution where the majority of scores cluster around the mean. Question number 74. Lecturer Cora narrates, I observe that when there is an English-speaking foreigner in class, more often than not, his classmates perceive him to be superior. To which Filipino trait does this point? A. Hospitality. B. Friendliness. C. Colonial mentality. D. Lack of confidence. The correct answer is C. Lecturer Core's observation points to colonial mentality. Colonial mentality refers to the tendency to regard foreign individuals, particularly those from historically dominant countries, as superior. This trait reflects an ingrained belief that values and standards from foreign cultures, especially those linked to colonial powers, are superior to local ones. Question number 75. Which violates this brain-based principle of teaching learning, which goes, Each child's brain is unique and vastly different from one another. A. Giving ample opportunity for a pupil to explore even if the class creates noise. B. Making a left-handed pupil write with his right hand as it is better this way. C. Allowing open dialogue among students. D. Employing me-teaching approaches. The correct answer is B. The principle, each child's brain is unique and vastly different from one another, is violated by making a left-handed pupil write with his right hand. This action disregards the individual uniqueness of the student's brain and preferences. Forcing a left-handed pupil to write with their right hand does not take into account their natural inclinations and can hinder their learning experience. It contrasts with recognizing and accommodating the diverse needs and characteristics of each student. Question number 76. Which one should teachers avoid to produce an environment conducive for learning? A. Tests. B. Seat plan. C. Individual competition. D. Games. The correct answer is C. To produce an environment conducive to learning, teachers should avoid individual competition. While competition can sometimes be motivating, excessive focus on individual competition can create a stressful environment and may not foster a collaborative and supportive learning atmosphere. Instead, emphasizing collaboration, cooperation, and a positive classroom culture tends to be more effective in supporting a conducive learning environment. Question number 77. You are convinced that whenever a student performs a desired behavior, provide reinforcement and soon the student learns to perform the behavior on her own. On which principle is your conviction based? A. Cognitivism. 
B. Behaviorism. C. Constructivism. D. Environmentalism. The correct and wower is B. Your conviction is based on behaviorism. Behaviorism focuses on the idea that behaviors can be learned or modified through reinforcement and punishment. By providing reinforcement for a desired behavior, you encourage the student to repeat that behavior, eventually learning to perform it independently. Question number 78. Men are built, not born. This quotation by John Watson states that a. The ineffectiveness of training on a person's development. b. The effect of environmental stimulation on a person's development. c. The absence of genetic influence on a person's development. d. The effect of heredity. The correct answer is b. John Watson's quotation, men are built, not born, emphasizes the effect of environmental stimulation on a person's development. John Broaddus Watson was an American psychologist who popularized the scientific theory of behaviorism. He argued that human behavior and development are shaped primarily by environmental factors and experiences rather than genetic or inherited traits. Question number 79. At the preoperational stage of Piaget's cognitive development theory, the child can see only his point of view and assumes that everyone also has the same view as his. What is this tendency called? A. Transductive reasoning. B. Animism. C. Egocentrism. D. Conservatism. The correct answer is C. The tendency for a child at the preoperational stage of Piaget's cognitive development theory to see only their own point of view and assume that everyone else shares the same view is called egocentrism. Egocentrism in this context refers to the child's difficulty in understanding that other people may have perspectives, thoughts, and feelings different from their own. Question number 80. The Latin expression. Vox populi est supreme lex. Means what? A. The supreme being is God. B. No one is above the law. C. The voice of the people is the supreme law. D. It is the popular choice. The correct answer is C. The Latin expression, Vox populi est supreme lex, translates to, The voice of the people is the supreme law. This phrase emphasizes the importance of popular opinion and the will of the people as the ultimate guiding principle in governance and decision-making. Question number 81. Which is not among the major targets of the Child-Friendly School System or CFSS? A. All school children are friendly. B. All children 6 to 12 years old are enrolled in elementary schools. C. All children complete their elementary education within six years. D. All grade six students pass the division, regional, and national tests. The correct answer is D. The major targets of the Child-Friendly School System, or CFSS, in the Philippine educational context focus on ensuring access, participation, and completion of basic education for all children in a supportive and nurturing environment. Given this, answer choice B, that is, all children 6 to 12 years old are enrolled in elementary schools, targets universal access to education, which is central to CFSS. Answer choice C, that is all children complete their elementary education within six years, targets completion, which is another key focus of CFSS. Option D, all grade six students pass the division, regional, and national tests, is more about academic achievement and assessment, which, while important, is not a primary target of the CFSS. The CFSS is more concerned with access, retention, and the overall environment of learning rather than specific test outcomes. Since we are asked which of the optios is not among the major targets of CFSS, D must be the correct answer as it is not aligned with the primary targets of the child-friendly school system. Note that while answer choice A, all school children are friendly, is not directly related to the core objectives of CFSS, it can well fall under the holistic and wholesome development of children which ultimately support the core targets of the CFSS.
Also between A and D, D is more clear-cut to be not among the core targets of the CFSS. Question number 82. Teacher Angelou discovered that her pupils are very good in dramatizing. Which tool must have helped her discover her pupils' strength? A. Portfolio Assessment B. Performance Test C. Journal Entry D. Paper and Pencil Test The correct answer is B. A performance test would have helped teacher Angelou discover her pupils' strength in dramatizing. A performance test involves evaluating students' abilities through demonstrations of skills or abilities in real-world or simulated scenarios. In this case, observing students' dramatic performances would reveal their strengths in dramatization. Question number 83. Which appropriate teaching practice flows from this research finding on the brain? The brain's emotional center is tied into its ability to learn. A. Create a learning environment that encourages students to explore their feelings and ideas freely. B. Come up with highly competitive games where winners will feel happy. C. Tell students to participate in class activities or else won't receive plus points in class recitation. D. To establish discipline, be judgmental in attitude. The correct answer is A. The appropriate teaching practice that flows from the research finding that the brain's emotional center is tied into its ability to learn is create a learning environment that encourages students to explore their feelings and ideas freely. Creating a supportive and emotionally positive learning environment helps engage students' emotional centers, which can enhance their ability to learn and retain information. Encouraging students to explore their feelings and ideas fosters a positive emotional state, which is conducive to effective learning. Question number 84. Schools should develop in the students the ability to adapt to a changing world. This is adherence to the philosophy of blank. A. Essentialism. B. Perennialism. C. Progressivism. D. Reconstructionism. The correct answer is D. The philosophy that advocates for developing in students the ability to adapt to a changing world is Reconstructionism. Reconstructionism emphasizes preparing students to address and adapt to societal changes and challenges. It focuses on fostering critical thinking and problem-solving skills to help students actively engage in and contribute to the transformation of society. Question number 85. The teacher's first task in the selection of media in teaching is to determine the blank. A. Choice of the students. B. Availability of the media. C. Objectives of the lesson. D. Technique to be used. The correct answer is C. The teacher's first task in the selection of media in teaching is to determine the objectives of the lesson. Determining the objectives of the lesson is crucial because it guides the selection of appropriate media and materials that will best support the learning goals and enhance the teaching process. Understanding what you aim to achieve with the lesson helps in choosing media that effectively facilitates those objectives. Question number 86. Mr. Asuncion is doing a performance-based assessment for the day's lesson. Which of the following will most likely happen? A. Students are evaluated in one sitting. B. Students do an actual demonstration of their skill. C. Students are evaluated in the most objective manner. D. Students are evaluated based on varied evidences of learning. The correct answer is B. For a performance-based assessment, the most likely scenario is that the students do an actual demonstration of their skill. Performance-based assessments typically involve students showcasing their skills or applying their knowledge in a practical, real-world context. Question number 87. Mrs. Lim rated her students in terms of appropriate and effective use of some laboratory equipment and measurement tools and the students' ability to follow the specified procedures. What mode of assessment should Mrs. Lim use? A. Portfolio Assessment B. Journal Assessment C. Traditional Assessment 
D. Performance-Based Assessment The correct answer is D. Mrs. Lim should use performance-based assessment. This type of assessment evaluates students on their ability to perform tasks and apply skills in real situations, such as using laboratory equipment and following procedures. Question number 88. If a teacher has set objectives in all domains or learning targets and which could be assessed using a single performance task, what criterion in selecting a task should she consider? A. Generalizability. B. Fairness. C. Multiple foci. D. Teachability. The correct answer is C. If the goal is to assess multiple learning targets or domains with a single performance task, the multiple foci criterion would be the most relevant. The multiple foci criterion in selecting a task refers to the ability of a task to address and assess several learning objectives or skills simultaneously. In teaching, this means designing a performance task that allows students to demonstrate a range of competencies, such as knowledge, skills, and abilities, within a single activity or assignment. This approach helps in evaluating various aspects of student learning efficiently and holistically. Question number 89. Which term refers to the collection of students' products and accomplishments in a given period for evaluation purposes? A. Diary. B. Portfolio. C. Anecdotal record. D. Observation report. The correct answer is B. The term that refers to the collection of students' products and accomplishments for evaluation purposes is portfolio. A portfolio is a systematic collection of a student's work and accomplishments gathered over a period of time. It includes various artifacts such as assignments, projects, tests, and reflections, showcasing the student's progress, skills, and achievements. Portfolios are used for evaluation purposes to assess the student's development, performance, and learning outcomes, providing a comprehensive view of their abilities and growth. Question number 90. Mrs. Jimenez allowed the students to develop their own portfolio in their own style as long as they show all the non-negotiable evidences of learning. What principle in portfolio assessment explains this practice? A. Content Principle B. Learning Principle C. Equity Principle D. Product Principle The correct answer is C. The principle that best explains Mrs. Jimenez's practice of allowing students to develop their own portfolio in their own style while ensuring that all non-negotiable evidences of learning are included is the Equity Principle. Equity principle emphasizes providing all students with an equal opportunity to demonstrate their learning in ways that are meaningful and accessible to them. By allowing students to personalize their portfolios, Mrs. Jimenez is respecting their individual differences and learning styles, which aligns with the equity principle. Question number 91. How should the following steps in portfolio assessment be arranged logically? One. Set targets. 2. Select evidences. 3. Collect evidences. 4. Rate collection. 5. Reflect on evidences. Your assert choices are A. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. B. 1, 3, 2, 5, and 4. C. 1, 2, 3, 5, and 4. D. 1, 3, 5, 2, and 4. The correct answer is B, 1, 3, 2, 5, and 4. The logical arrangement of the steps in portfolio assessment is as follows. First is to set targets. Establish the goals or objectives for the portfolio. Next, collect evidences. Gather materials or works that could potentially demonstrate the achievement of these targets. Next, select evidences. Choose the most appropriate pieces of evidence from the collection that best showcase learning and progress. Next, reflect on evidences. Analyze and reflect on the selected pieces to understand what they demonstrate about the learning process. 
And finally, rate collection. Evaluate or assess the collection based on set criteria. Question number 92. Which could be seen in a rubric? 1. Objective in a high level of cognitive behavior. 2. Multiple criteria in assessing learning. 3. Quantitative descriptions of the quality of work. 4. Qualitative descriptions of the quality of work. Your answer choices are A. 1 and 2 only. B. 2, 3, and 4 only. C. 1, 2, and 3 only. D. 1, 2, 3, and 4. The correct answer is B. 2, 3, and 4 only. The features that can be seen in a rubric are Multiple criteria in assessing learning, answer choice 2. Rubrics often include various criteria that are used to evaluate different aspects of the work. Quantitative descriptions of the quality of work, answer choice 3. Rubrics often include numerical scores or ratings to indicate different levels of performance. And Qualitative descriptions of the quality of work, answer choice 4. Rubrics also typically include descriptive language to define what. Answer choice 1, objective in a high level of cognitive behavior, is not typically found in a rubric, as rubrics focus more on assessment criteria and descriptions rather than specific objectives or learning outcomes. Question number 93. The pupils are to be judged individually on their mastery of the singing of the national anthem so their teacher let them sing individually? What should the teacher use in rating the performance of the pupils considering the fact that the teacher has only one period to spend in evaluating her 20 pupils? A. Analytic B. Holistic C. Either holistic or analytic D. Both holistic and analytic The correct answer is B. Given that the teacher has only one period to evaluate 20 pupils on their mastery of singing the national anthem, the most efficient approach would be to use a holistic rubric. A holistic rubric allows the teacher to assess the overall performance of each pupil quickly, providing a single score based on the general quality of the performance rather than breaking it down into multiple criteria. This method is faster and more practical when time is limited. <laughs> We are devoting the remaining questions in this 101-item LET Professional Education Reviewer on some widely circulating review questions that come with confusing, misleading, or outright wrong answers. We have seen some of these ourselves, in fact multiple times on various social media platforms, while a few others have been sent to us by some of our viewers asking us to validate because they suspect that the provided answers may be incorrect. In all cases, these questions are provided with supposedly correct answers but without any explanation, so some unsuspecting reviewees may simply take them hook, line, and sinker without validating the answers. It would be such a shame if you fail your LET because you were misled by the erroneous answers to these questions when you encountered them in your review. Question number 94. Thomasites are blank. A. The soldiers who doubted the success of the public educational system to be set in the Philippines. B. The first American teacher recruits to help establish the public educational system in the Philippines. C. The first religious group who came to the Philippines on board the U.S. transport named Thomas. D. The devotees of St. Thomas Aquinas who came to evangelize. We've seen this question shared hundred or more times on Facebook and other social media platforms. While the correct answer provided in some of those instances was indeed correct, in more cases the supposedly correct answer that is provided is incorrect. The often supposedly correct answer provided with this review question is answer choice C. If you are among those who encountered this before, we are telling you now that C is not the correct answer. <coughs> While it is true that the Thomasites got their moniker from the U.S. transport ship that brought them to the Philippines, it is not an established fact that they were a religious group. In all available history accounts that we have consulted in researching on this, we haven't seen a single one that describes them as religious or as members of some specific religious group. They were simply referred to as teachers from various universities and colleges in the United States, many of which belong to diverse religious affiliations or no specific religious affiliation at all. The true correct answer to this question is B. Question number 95. 
The Thomasites were a group of nearly 600 American teachers, 346 men and 180 women, who traveled from the United States to the newly occupied territory of the Philippines on the U.S. Army Transport Thomas in 1901. They came from 43 different states and 193 colleges, universities, and normal schools, including Harvard, Yale, Cornell, University of Chicago, and many others. The Thomasites arrived in the Philippines on August 21, 1901, to establish a new public school system, to teach basic education, and to train Filipino teachers, with English as the medium of instruction. Question number 95. You intend to assess effective attributes such as capacity to feel, attitudes, and behavior. Which of the following should you establish to ascertain the instrument's validity? A. Construct. B. Content. C. Criterion related. D. Face. You may have encountered this review question and was presented with D as the supposed correct answer. <coughs> The true correct answer is, in fact, A. Construct. When assessing effective attributes such as capacity to feel, attitudes, and behavior, you should establish construct validity. Construct validity refers to how well a test or instrument measures the theoretical construct it is intended to measure. Since effective attributes are abstract concepts, establishing construct validity ensures that the instrument accurately reflects the specific psychological traits or characteristics being assessed. Why is D not the correct answer? Face validity refers to the extent to which a test or assessment appears to measure what it is supposed to measure, based on a superficial examination. It's often considered the least rigorous form of validity because it doesn't involve statistical analysis but rather relies on subjective judgment. While face validity might be relevant when assessing whether the instrument seems appropriate to measure effective attributes at a glance, it doesn't provide the robust evidence needed to ensure that the instrument actually measures the underlying construct effectively. Construct validity is typically more relevant and critical in this context because it assesses whether the instrument truly captures the theoretical constructs it is intended to measure, such as attitudes, feelings, behaviors. D could be the correct answer if the question focuses on the initial, superficial appropriateness of the instrument rather than a deep, theoretical evaluation. However, if the goal is to ensure that the instrument genuinely measures the complex effective attributes, construct validity is the more accurate and important criterion to establish. Therefore, while face validity might be somewhat relevant, construct validity is generally the more appropriate answer. Question number 96. His aim of education is individual not a preparation for but participation in the life around the individual. A. Frugal. B. Spencer. C. Herbart. D. Pestalozzi. We've seen this review question shared several times on Facebook, and it is always presented with A. Frugal as the correct answer. <coughs> it is actually very easy to validate and establish that the true correct answer is D. Pestalozzi and not A. Frugal. We suspect that it was simply a typo error when Frugal was presented as the correct answer. However, nobody challenged it and everybody either just accepted it or realized that frugal is incorrect but did nothing to rectify the erroneous answer for the sake of others. We are taking it upon ourselves to doing that now. The statement, his aim of education is individual not a preparation for but participation in the life around the individual, aligns with the educational philosophy of Pestalozzi. Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi emphasized the development of the individual and believed that education should focus on active participation in life, rather than merely preparing students for future roles. In case you are curious what Frubel is known for, Friedrich Frubel, the founder of the kindergarten system, is known for emphasizing the importance of play in early childhood education and the idea that education should foster the child's natural development. His educational philosophy centers on the concept of learning through play, where children engage in activities that align with their developmental stages and interests. Frubel's approach does involve participation in the life around the individual, but it is more specifically associated with fostering creativity and self-expression through play and hands-on activities. The aim is to support the child's growth in a way that integrates with their natural curiosity and developmental needs. In contrast, Pestalozzi focused on the holistic development of the child, emphasizing that education should address the child's individual needs and support active participation in their surroundings. 
both Frubel and Pestalozzi had significant contributions to educational philosophy, but the statement you provided aligns more closely with Pestalozzi's focus on the individual's participation in life. However, Frubel's educational principles also emphasize the importance of active and meaningful engagement in learning. Question number 97. Which of these are non-threatening means of assessing learning outcomes? 1. Portfolio. 2. Self-evaluation. 3. Peer evaluation. 4. Learning journals. Your answer choices are A. 1 and 2. B. 1 and 3. C. 1, 2, and 4. D. 2 and 3. This review question was sent to us by one of our viewers. She wanted to get our opinion if the correct answer that was presented with it, that is A, 1 and 2, is indeed correct. Her own answer to the question, C, does not match the supposed correct answer. We are inclined to agree with our viewer that answer choice C should be the correct answer to this question instead of answer choice A. While both 1 and 2 are indeed non-threatening means of assessing learning outcomes, so is 4. The non-threatening means of assessing learning outcomes from the given options are 1. Portfolio A collection of student work that shows progress over time, allowing for self-reflection and personal growth. This is one of the least threatening means of assessing learning outcomes. 2. Self-evaluation Students assess their own learning and progress, which encourages self-awareness and personal responsibility. It is also a very non-threatening means to assess learning outcomes. And 4. Learning journals. Personal reflections by students on their learning experiences, promoting introspection and self-assessment. This can be considered equally if not even more non-threatening as portfolio and self-evaluation. From among the given options, only three, peer evaluation, can be considered to be threatening. While collaborative and helpful, peer evaluation can sometimes feel intimidating or competitive to students, making it less consistently non-threatening compared to the other methods listed. Question number 98. We encounter people whose prayer goes like this, O oh God, if there is a God, save my soul, if I have a soul. From whom is this prayer? A. Stoic. B. Empiricist. C. Agnostic. D. Skeptic. We saw this one from a popular YouTube channel specializing on LET review. The correct answer that is presented is D. Skeptic. However, no explanation was given. With all due respect and without prejudice to the owner and presenter of the YouTube video who, by the way, is a respected licensed professional teacher, the true correct answer should be C, agnostic. The prayer O oh God, if there is a God, save my soul, if I have a soul, reflects a lack of certainty about the existence of God and the soul, which is characteristic of agnostics. An agnostic person typically believes that the existence of God, the divine, or the supernatural is unknown or unknowable. This prayer reflects the agnostic's doubt and uncertainty. While both agnostics and skeptics may express doubt and uncertainty, they have different philosophical focuses. An agnostic typically maintains that the existence of God, the divine, or the supernatural is unknown or unknowable. They may be open to the possibility but believe that definitive knowledge is beyond human reach. A skeptic, on the other hand, generally questions the validity of claims and seeks evidence before accepting them. Skepticism can apply to a wide range of issues, including religious beliefs, but it often involves a more critical and questioning approach to all types of knowledge and assertions. The prayer in question, expressing uncertainty about the existence of God and the soul, aligns more closely with agnosticism because it focuses specifically on the unknowability of the divine and spiritual aspects. A skeptic would likely question a broader range of beliefs and claims, not just those related to spirituality. Question number 99. What does a table of specification establish? A. Construct validity. B. Content-related validity and criterion reference. C. 
Content Validity and Construct Validity D. Content Validity and Content Related Validity If you've seen this review question being shared around in various social media platforms, chances are you have been presented with answer choice C as the supposed correct answer. Well, the true correct answer is answer choice D, content validity and content related validity. The table of specifications helps ensure that a test aligns with the curriculum and covers the relevant content areas proportionately. It ensures that the test items reflect the important aspects of the content and skills that were taught, thus supporting content validity. It also helps in ensuring that the test measures what it is intended to measure, which is part of content-related validity. While the table of specifications does support content validity by ensuring that the test content aligns with the curriculum, it does not directly establish construct validity. Construct validity is concerned with whether a test measures the theoretical construct it claims to measure. This typically requires additional evidence and analysis beyond what ATOS provides. So, the more accurate answer is D, content validity and content related validity. Question number 100. The benefit of reading aloud is that children learn, blank. A. New vocabulary in meaningful contexts. B. To value the presence of their friends as they read together. C. To make predictions by examining pictures and listening for clues. D. To use their imaginations to explore new ideas as they listen to books. The supposed correct answer presented with this review question is often answer choice B to value the presence of their friends as they read together. While it is a desirable benefit for children to value the presence of their friends as they read together, it is not the best answer for this given question. The best and true correct answer is A. The benefit of reading aloud is that children learn new vocabulary in meaningful contexts. When children listen to books being read aloud, they are exposed to new vocabulary within the context of the story, which helps them understand and remember the meanings of new words. This exposure to rich language helps build their vocabulary and comprehension skills. Question number 101. A child fainted in your class because she has not eaten her breakfast. What is the best thing for you to do in this situation? A. Ignore the situation. B. Comfort the child. C. Give the child food. D. Call the parent. We've seen this question shared in various Facebook groups, and in every instance the supposed correct answer that is presented is C. Give the child food. <coughs> However, after consultations with some medical practitioners and licensed paramedics, we believe that the better option should be B, comfort the child. In a situation where a child has fainted due to not eating breakfast, the immediate steps should focus on safety and health. Here's a refined approach. 1. Ensure safety and comfort. Check if the child is okay and in a safe position and monitor his or her condition. 2. Call for medical help. If the child has fainted or is unwell, it's important to seek medical assistance to ensure there are no serious underlying issues. That the child fainted due to extreme hunger may well be just an assumption and possibly a wrong assumption at that. 3. Provide food. Once the child's immediate safety and medical needs are addressed, and if they are conscious and able to eat, you can provide food. 4. Inform the parent. Contact the parent to inform them of the situation and to discuss any follow-up actions. While addressing immediate health and safety concerns is critical, giving food can be done once the child's immediate safety and comfort are ensured. You 
you have just completed watching the penultimate cram time reviewer for the professional education portion of the licensure examination for teachers or let check out more related review videos and playlists on our channel we would like to acknowledge the participations and contributions of our two lpts teacher rosa and teacher james in putting together this reviewer if you find this useful, please like and share. Leave a comment to share your thoughts or questions regarding this reviewer or any particular part of it. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to Review Central and click the bell button to get notified of all future reviewers and updates. Like and follow us on your favorite social media platforms. Good luck to your forthcoming LET and we look forward to your lifelong career as a licensed professional teacher. Thank <laughs> you.